Pay close attention to your breath. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, and notice where you feel the process of breathing in your body. There's the air coming in and out through the nose. But there's also the movement of the rib cage, the movement of your shoulders, the abdomen, the diaphragm. And that sense of movement is also a kind of breath. The Buddha talks about the different elements or properties that make up our sense of the body as we feel it from within. There's fire, which is the warmth you feel, water, the coolness, earth is the solidity, and breath, sometimes translated as wind, is a sense of energy. And the energy comes in many levels. There's the in and out breath, there's feelings of movement or energy that let you know that you have a body. The fact that you're sitting here, you know where your legs are, you know where your arms are, you know where your head is. There's a sense of energy that's already there that lets you know these things. Without that, you'd be paralyzed. There's also a layer of energy inside that's very still. It's energy, but it's still. That too counts as a kind of breath. So it's important that you learn how to acquaint yourselves with these different levels of energy, because they can help the mind settle down, have a sense of ease, just being right here in the body. But to gain that sense of ease, you have to be able to work with this energy, to notice where it feels blocked, where it feels tight, where it feels tense. One way of noticing that is to tense up different muscles in your body and then relax them. Notice the difference. Or you can go down through the body and notice as you, say, as you go through the neck and down the back which side of the body seems to be holding more tension. Sometimes there'll be more tension, say, in your right upper back and in your left lower back. Or as you go down through the, the hips the legs. At different levels, different sides will have more tension. If you notice that one side seems to have more tension than the other side, consciously relax that side. Say if there's tension in your right knee, relax the muscles around the right knee and then try to keep them relaxed all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And try to be sensitive to how that changes the energy flow in your body. This may take time. Some people are very sensitive to the energy in their bodies, other people are very insensitive. But it's a sensitivity that can be developed if you pay attention to it. You may notice that you're more sensitive to some parts of the body than others. Well, focus on those first, then. Keep those relaxed all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. And then allow your conscious awareness of the body to spread from those spots to other spots. The sensitivity is important, not only for the meditation, but also as you go through daily life. Because when strong defilements move into the mind, greed, anger, fear, they'll have an impact on the body through the breath. The breath is the medium through which the mind is aware of the body, and the body has an impact on the mind. You know, a trigger goes off in your mind that something is getting you angry or fearful or whatever. And there'll be a change in the energy in the body. Many times this will aggravate the problem. So it's an important skill to learn how to relax everything in the body. Even when triggers are going off in your head, 
saying, this I can't stand, this I can't abide, this I'm afraid of, this is something I really want, really crave. Those ideas can be going through your mind, but they don't have to have an impact on the body. If you allow them to have an impact on the body, then the body gets hijacked. And all of a sudden it seems, it seems to be on the side of the, the defilements. You want to reclaim your body. And by being sensitive to the breath energy, this is how you do it. Learning how to detect these knots of tension or patterns of tension that can quickly build up in the body and allow them to dissipate, allow them to dissolve away. And then keep that sense of open, relaxed energy going, despite whatever's going on in your head. That way the feelings don't become so overwhelming. Otherwise it's not only the voices shouting in your head, but it's also the hormones in your body, all ganged up against you. Or if you learn how to relax the body through difficult, difficult emotions, you've got an ally. The emotions are not so overwhelming. They're a lot easier to, to deal with and to understand. Say you're angry about something. Well, maybe there really is something wrong going on there, but your anger is not going to help right the wrong. You want to learn how to dissolve that feeling of anger. At least dissolve the physical side. So you can look at the mental side. What's actually going on? What are the issues here? What would be an effective way to respond? Because when anger comes through, the mind is quick to grab onto anything that seems likely. Your sense of shame, your sense of compunction disappear at that point, and the mind will latch onto all kinds of outrageous stuff. And the same with fear, the same with lust. The mind is desperate. But if you can get the breath on your side, it's a lot less desperation. And you can reinstate your sense of shame. Shame here doesn't mean you feel ashamed about yourself. It's just a sense of knowing what actions are shameful. Compunction means realizing that there may be things you want to do, but you know there are going to be bad consequences down the line if you do them, so you don't want to do them. You don't want to cause that harm. When you're feeling better in the body, it's a lot easier for your shame and compunction to function in a healthy, helpful way. <laughs> so learn to have the breath on your side. The more sensitive you get to it, the more it'll do for you. It's like a friendship. The more you're sensitive to the other person's needs, the more that person is going to be happy to help when you have needs. So learn to look at the breath as your friend. As with any friendship, it takes a while to get acquainted. But this is a friendship that's really worth developing, really worth investing a lot of time, a lot of energy. Because after all, if you can't be friends with your breath, what kind of relationship are you having with this basic force in your life? If you're ignorant of your breath, you're totally cut off of what it is that's keeping you alive. So try to develop some sensitivity around this. When you find that you've developed an important ally, in your quest to be as harmless as possible, to cause as little suffering as possible, both for yourself and for the people around you. You look at the world and there's a lot of craziness going on. So wherever you can find a good, reliable ally, take care of it, as the Buddha said, as a mother her child. Look after this ally. Attend to it. Because in our quest to put an end to suffering, we need all the help we can get.